One of the interesting things in Luxembourg is that as a PhD student, you are kind of the best of both worlds. You're a student, so your residence permit says student, you fulfill all the requirements as a student, but you have a work contract. You have a proper work contract, it is, and the idea with that is it's a bit more security in your position. So your PhD contract is a fairly standard work contract in Luxembourg. It goes through all of the details of where do I work, where do I, what do I need to do, what are my employer's obligations to me, what are my obligations to my employer, blah, blah, blah. Most of it is in legal French, so if you aren't a French speaker, it can be very daunting. And even as a French speaker, it's very daunting. But the essential bits are. So the contract says that you are, when you start your PhD in Luxembourg, your contract is for 14 months. You can then have this contract extended twice. First to by 22 months to 36 months, and the final extension is to 48 months. So your maximum PhD contract length is 48 months. It also includes the insurance, so you have the pension insurance, the health insurance, that is covered under the work contract. So unless you want a top-up, which there are top-up insurances here, so normally the standard health insurance covers roughly 88% of your medical expenses with the remaining 12% covered by you personally, but you have top-up insurances you can buy that cover that remaining 12% plus other things that the Luxembourg statutory insurance does not cover. You also have written into your contract 32 days of holiday, so it sounds like a lot, and it is a lot, but you have the right to paid time off just like any other employee in Luxembourg, and that's pretty much it. The notable thing with the contract is that you cannot take another job without the consent of the university. In general, you won't need to take another job, but that means that you can't get another gig on the side without letting the university know first. I mentioned that the contract starts at 14 months and has a couple of extensions on it. And those those extensions are connected to the CET meetings. So in the first CET meeting, the decision actually is whether or not to extend your contract from 14 months to 36 months total. This is, this means that if the CT says, no, we don't want to allow the extension, then the contract ends after 14 months, you leave, all's fine. Whereas the second extension to 30, from 36 to 48 months happens after the third CT meeting, where you say, I would like an extension, or no, I don't need an extension, I can finish right away. There has been some talk about some additional changes, one of them being that in Luxembourg, normally a fixed term work contract, like the one you have as a PhD student, has a trial period built in. In French, it's called a période d'essai. And this trial period is six months. The trial period means that if you find that things aren't working out and that things aren't it's not working, it's easier to terminate the contract during the trial period. So there has been talk about moving the first CET to coinciding with the trial period end, which would then be at six months. This is still up in the air, but formally there is an evaluation at the end of the sixth month to decide whether or not things are going as they should be and that you're allowed to continue. Normally this is more of a thing for postdocs, but it is written into the PhD contract. And they've recently become a bit more aware of the trial period's existence and how it affects you. The other thing to note in Luxembourg is the PhD 
time limit of four years and four months is very strict, but the work contracts are also quite limited. As a researcher, you are only allowed to be employed on a time-limited contract for a maximum of five years. Five years for the same employer, and you can't expect that the employer goes, oh, you've been employed for five years, okay, so just wait a day, and then you get another five years. You have to wait at least one-third of the length of the contracts that you've already completed. So if you've already been employed for three years, you can only reset the five-year clock by being not employed by that employer for one year. Likewise, if you are for four years and six months, you need to wait for one and a half years, blah, 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 blah. So it's a very strict five-year time limit unless they offer you an indefinite slash permanent contract. So in the event you don't, you aren't lucky enough to get one of these permanent contracts, what other options are there? So, the easiest obviously is if you find a job in Luxembourg. There is a simpler procedure to get a work permit and work visa if you complete a degree in Luxembourg, but you still have to have the completed work contract. The big thing is that they don't have to go through the procedure of declaring the vacancy to Adam and the priority rule for European citizens. The other option is what's called a job seeker visa. So this was very recently introduced in two, I think it was last year, and it is a nine month residence permit to allow you to find work. You can apply for the job seeker visa after you finish your PhD or a postdoc stay in Luxembourg. But number one, you can't renew the nine months. So the visa is for nine months and it's non-renewable. The second thing is that you cannot work with the job seeker visa, which seems a bit counterintuitive, but you're not allowed to work. So you have to show that you have enough money to support yourself for those nine months. Normally, this requires you to have about 11,000 euros in your bank account on the day you apply for the job seeker visa. So it's definitely not the preferred option, but it is an option in case you're having difficulty finding employment. Notably, a lot of other European countries nearby do have some other sort of job seeker visa available even if you're coming in from outside the country. So for example, in Germany, Germany has a job seeker visa for PhD students from outside Germany, but only for six months. And I believe the Netherlands has something similar, but also quite limited if you are coming in from outside the Netherlands. So there are opportunities for you to be able to stay in Europe to look for a job, but obviously the easiest is if you can find something right as soon as your permit ends. Because in Luxembourg, your residence permit ends one week after your work contract does. So not a lot of wiggle work.